Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome back to the Maker's Cave. And I received the second shipment from Eagle Moss, uh, issues uh, three, four, five, and six, and a free gift, uh, which is, well, let me take it out of the plastic, the Eleanor Mustang license plate. Probably mount that up somewhere. Now, let's go over real quick the uh, issues. Issue three. Uh, looks like it is the intake manifold and the valve cover gaskets and the air cleaner. Uh, we'll go over the air cleaner um, during the assembly. We see a problem with that. F, uh, issue four is the hood. Uh, looks like there's some LEDs in here. Oh, uh, the uh, off-road lights are here. So I guess we're going to be doing them and wiring them up. And the grill issues five is one seat and issue six looks like it is one inner wheel assembly it looks like you got the uh, brake caliper here and a suspension piece uh, and of course we have some screws in here so i'm going to separate the screws out put them in our screw holder i'll bring the camera forward like always and then we'll start putting everything together all right so we'll start by moving this one out of the way it's a little big put this up here for later And we are going to start with issue three. And it looks like we are putting together the manifold. This is all metal. Okay, so we're going to take the manifold. Take the valve cover gasket. These are also metal. I didn't expect that. And it's a, it takes a DS2 screw. Using a new screwdriver here and it is not magnetized. Rub it against our hard drive magnet, and we'll, uh, all right, since we're going in the metal, we will take out our rapid tap fluid to make it a little easier to go in. Of course, you can also use three-in-one oil. And then we do the other side. Both valve covers are on. And now they want you to put on the oil cap. This is keyed, so it'll only go in one way. Okay, next we're going to put this aside. We're going to be doing the air cleaner, and this is where we're going to have a conversation. So here is the top of the air cleaner. Uh, as you can see, it says Eleanor on it. Uh, this isn't even close to what the, uh, the air cleaner looks like in the movie. In post, I'll put a picture up here in the corner of what it should look like. So we're gonna assemble this as is right now, but we have a resin prison, a resin prison. We have a resin printer, 3D printer coming in, and I'm pretty sure this is gonna be one of the first things that I redesign because this is just not realistic at all. But we'll go ahead and put it together like they said. So they have this little metal strip that goes around it. It's a little groove that it fits in. 
on one of the Facebook pages I belong to, there's been a lot of talk about this air cleaner. Uh, apparently, as the story goes, whoever had to sign off on the rights of this, um, they wouldn't sign off on allowing Eagle Moss to, to do this unless they put the L on her here. Uh, there are several cars used in the movie. Uh, some, <laughs> if you look in the engine on some of them, but depending on the picture, it's either going to say Mustang, it could have the Ford with the oval, it could even have Cobra. I think when I design it, I'm going to have mine say Mustang. So I've got that on here, and then you put this on here, the bottom. Okay, I think that's as good as I'm going to get it. So this gets a PS5 screw. And we're going plastic to plastic so I don't need the tapping oil. Okay, so that's together. Put that aside. Now it wants us to bring back the intake manifold, and now we're going to put the carburetors on. They are identical. And there's two registration points here, so they can easily go right on here. Notice I used the word easily. Okay, so the two carbs are in there. Now they want you to take the air cleaner Now the air cleaner is supposed to cover both in the car in the production model or the actual car The air cleaner is supposed to go over as much of the carburetors as you can and this one does not that's one of the things we're going to want to fix especially supposed to go towards the back. And one of the hints that people said is you put this on backwards so this way it fits more to the rear of the car. So I'll do that for now because I'm pretty sure we're going to be taking this off and putting a new one on. Uh, well, maybe not because it doesn't look like it fits. Okay, the reason I'm having some trouble here is the stem of this air cleaner is supposed to go into the center of this carburetor. When it's on, it doesn't do that that easy. It doesn't look like it's been demolded very well. So what I want to do is I want to take our X-Acto knife. And I'm just going to go around the hole a little bit just to get any excess plastic from the molding process off of there. There we go. Now it's in. And we have to turn that over. And we assemble it with a PS05 screw. I can see we are definitely going to be redesigning this.
And kit three, according to them, is now completed. So here's what we have. Intake manifold, valve cover gaskets, and the air cleaner. So we'll put that aside. And now we move on to kit four, which is the hood. Big boy, and it's heavy too. Move that oil up there before it goes all over the place. Here it is. All right, step one, we're gonna be putting the grill in. So let's get the lid off. And we have to do a recall. We need the parts from the previous build. So in order to put these grills in, we're gonna need the front bumper that we did previously. Now, if you see the wires, this is from our late modification that we did. So step one, so we take the grill, and we put it into here. Now, if you're wondering, the grill is a plastic, and they get held in with some DS3 screws. Grills on. Okay, next is one of the fog lights, 01A. There's two of them here, but I don't think it really makes a difference. And flip this over. goes into there and it is held with DS2. Some oil. And we're just gonna go ahead and do the other one. Two fog lights are in or not fog lights, off-road lights. Okay, looks like we're gonna do some wiring next for the lights. So we need an O4F. This side gets O1. This one. The hell does it work? It says it just goes in there. Oh, how about that? There they are. They're just press fit in there. And then this one goes to this fog light here. Our high high tech pointer here. So one lead went one LED went into here. And the second LED went in over here to the off-road light. And we're gonna do the same for the other side. Now I'm glad we did this this early in the build because anyone who followed along and did our light mod, one of the questions was how are we gonna fire off these lights we added? Well, we can very carefully now tap into these power leads to get the lights to work. Of course, we have to, have to wait and see, you know, what the voltage is. But usually on Eagle Moss, it's four and a half volts is what they use. We'll probably use a resistor to bring it in the line. Now we have to do the other grill. And that goes, says it goes 
right here. Problem is, that's where these leads are at. How do you work around that? Okay. Now, my wife hates when I use my hand and bring things in close. She says I'm not a hand model. The world's greatest hand model. I wanted to show you that you just kind of force them in there, you know, fold over the LED cabling, and then the grill will screw in. Not entirely sure if that was the best design, but we'll go with it. And what do they want us to do that with? DS2 screws. Really? I put the lid on the oil. And from the front, you really can't tell that it's, it's, it's press fit like that in the back. That, so I guess Eagle Moss knew what they were doing. And stage four is complete. We'll put that over here. Next is stage five, which is the seat. We're going to be doing the seat, and there's only three parts to the seat. Here's the back. Here's an insert that gives you the metal trim around the seat. Okay, they want you to do that, and then they want you to secure that with PSO5 screws. These two pieces are plastic. That was 5.3. And here's the final stage. And oh wow, this is actually a uh, soft vinyl or soft rubber to actually give a feel of a real seat. And then that goes right on here. Oh, and it just snap fits. That's it. Oh, there's the seat. Next is the final one, which is six. And this looks like it's the hub and some suspension parts. Okay, so wants us to take this disc and take this suspension part put it through there and then once we'll it take the other side of the hub add it on backwards and why wouldn't I two registration marks there. I'm trying to get them to fit in there. There they go. Okay, and then this goes on here. Then you take the brake. Brake caliper, rather. And it slides into here and locks. Let me tell you my problem with going any farther. Everything here it's silver right down to this. I want to show you what I'm talking about. It's all one color, very monochromatic as far as I'm concerned. I've always been partial to red calipers that look on sports cars. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to take a real quick break here. I'm going to hit this with some Tamiya um, Italian red spray paint. And I think I'm going to make the calipers red just so that it stands out a little against here and then we'll pick it back up. I'm back. I have the pieces painted right over here, but before I do that, I just want to say that I know my producer, otherwise known as my wife, Mrs. Maker, she's going to have a fit when she sees this and that I didn't show you uh, me spray painting the, uh, the piece. I didn't think, I think everybody knows how to spray paint. I, I, I don't think anyone needs to know that. Most important part is, is it's a two-step process. 
is the first thing I used is uh, Tamiya's Ultra Fine Surface gray, Light Gray Primer. Uh, I did that because it makes a good adhesion for the paint that you're going to put on top of it. Um, those parts that we did were chrome or were, uh, you know, plastic dip chrome. So sometimes paint doesn't stick real well to that. So I surface primed it first. And you want to make sure you get the ultra fine, okay, so it doesn't make a buildup. Then all I did is I hit the, the brake caliper with Tamiya's, um, I don't know what, the, it's TS8. It's called Italian Red. You could use gloss red. You could use anything. I didn't think I needed to pull out the, the airbrush and do all that. I just simply hit it with this. And here's what our final result looks like. Pretty nice, I think. It's going to add some color to that. I don't want to put it on the wheel hub yet. So I'm going to let this sit for overnight. And then tomorrow we'll come back and we'll, we'll finish up this assembly. So here is the wheel assembly. On the back is the suspension part. The top right here, this is supposed to be the brake rotor that the caliper squeezes. And the piece underneath, right here, that's a dust cover. Now usually on sports cars, they're like a painted black or they're even uh, maybe a bright red or bright blue, they're, they're some other accent color. But the problem is when you put the brake caliper on here, okay, the caliper goes over this piece, which, you know, technically if this was a real car, it couldn't do it because it couldn't squeeze the rotor. But the big problem is, is once the wheel's situated on here straight, you can, oh, I'm all over the camera for you guys, oh, I'm sorry. You can see this right here. You can see the back of the dust cover, which shouldn't be there. I, I know it's a picky own kind of thing, but it's bothering me. Let me take this par off. Show you the actual disc rotor. This part right here, this V section right here, that should not be there. So, along with painting the caliper red, I think what we're going to do is I'm going to take down some of this uh, plastic right here so when the rotor's on there and the caliper's on it, you can't see the back of it. And then, uh, just like the brake caliper, I'm going to shoot this with the Ultra Fine Gray uh, Tamiya uh, Primer and then I'm going to paint this a semi-gloss black. Uh, I think that's going to make this look real better. <laughs> Was that English? I think that will make it much better. Um, so we're going to do that now, and then I'll come back. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. Because uh, this is a bit of a mod here. So what I do is I took my real fine hobby saw here, very fine tooth, and I'm going to just go down on one side of the V here. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Very small strokes, very controlled. Now, I, if you can see that, I made two cuts. Now I'm going to remove that excess plastic. Now I'm going to remove the excess plastic that's there. That's probably a little easier said than done. I'm trying to figure out how I would actually do that. Because I don't want to damage the piece too much. I was thinking of a Dremel, but I don't want to do that. So I think what I'm going to do is just simply do a V here. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now it's a little misshapen there, so I think what I'm going to do is now is probably where I think I might use my Dremel. A little battery powered Dremel here, very low speed. Just knock that edge down a little bit. 
Now to show you what the, how that's going to look, if you look here, you're going to notice you can't see that dust cover behind there anymore where the caliper is. That's going to look really good. So now it's just a matter of painting the dust cover black, which we're going to do. We're going to hit that with some, like I said, some uh, ultra fine gray primer by Tamiya, and then a semi gloss, and then we'll be back and see how that looks. Okay, I hope there's not too much background noise here because I had to open a window because I spray painted in this room, which I normally don't do. So we have here all our parts that we freshly painted. And again, I'll do the hand model thing. Red caliper, black dust cover. And now we're going to assemble it like the directions wanted us to. And before we stop to correct this, so there's registration marks there that you that match in. Hold that there. That goes over here. And now it's time to put the brake caliper on. We're going to push that in. So much better. Now we're going to put this down here and we'll go back to our directions for the wheel. We did all this. Now it wants us to put, take this. I was so excited to see how this would look assembled. I got ahead of myself and didn't read the directions. On that uh, shaft coming out of the tire or the rim, uh, there's a registration notch that allows the uh, suspension assembly to meet up properly. So it gave me a little bit of a problem until I noticed that. And secure it with a DS04 screw. And does not seem to be going in. Oh, that is why. There's a registration mark on the rim. There we go. Now it fell in. Okay, here's a tip. Don't make it too tight or the wheel won't spin. don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not. Right here, maybe I'll take some pictures, but right behind it is the caliper, which is now red. And behind that is the dust cover, which is black, which is much better. And of course they want us to put the center piece in there. And there it is, the tire. One tire is done. Part six is complete. Three, four, five, and six. So we are all done. Let's review what we've done so far today. So that brings us to the end of issues three, four, five, and six of the Eagle Moss Eleanor Mustang from Gone in 60 Seconds. Uh, just to recap what we did today, we put in uh, two grill sections in the front bumper, and we also put in the LEDs for the headlights and the uh, off-road lights. We took the intake manifold. Uh, we put on the carburetors and the air cleaner, uh, which a future video is going to be a mod of this because as we discussed, this air cleaner is not cutting it. We assembled one seat, one back of a seat, and most importantly, which we didn't, I, well, I didn't expect to do today, was we modified the uh, the wheel uh, by painting the brake caliper, uh, cutting out a small section of the dust cover, painting the dust cover, and as you saw in the video, I think that really this really spruces this model up. And the only thing that did come in the kit that we didn't use was a very substantial hood, 
all metal. Uh, this thing is beefy. I can't wait to get more parts to start putting this together. So, thanks for joining me on this. Um, if you found this uh, helpful, uh, be sure to hit the like button. Uh, if you want to see more of what's coming out, hit subscribe. And if you want to be alerted to what comes out, uh, make sure you hit the bell. I will have links to everything that I did today, all the tools and supplies and paints and everything that I used, they'll, they'll be in links below. So, until the next time, I'm Steve. Thanks for stopping by the Maker's Cave.